so basically uh, we know that this is a molecule which is going to affect the uh, angiotensin uh, the ras system so we need to make sure that the patient is not suffering from renal failure so especially low gfrs which are less than uh, 15% or so should not be treated with amnis so that is one so we uh, can uh, use these molecules in the borderline renal dysfunction uh, to say even of creatinine of 2 but we need to monitor these patients uh, uh, renal function and if the renal function worsening happens if there is any significant increase in the creatinine or reduction in gfr then we need to stop the doses or re reduce the doses at least so that is one part secondly the other problem what we expect is uh, increase in the serum potassium levels so again we need to keep monitoring those and even in these patients even if the serum creatinine levels go up Generally, it is a diet which needs to be modified. So, the potassium containing things, especially like tea or banana, what Indian people are more used to, we should ask the patients to reduce or stop those particular things, and then that will stabilize the serum potassium. And of course, uh, we have new molecules which are coming in which will reduce the serum uh, uh, potassium levels, that is, petrometer kind of molecules. But these are a little expensive and currently at least not very commonly used. So that is another problem which we uh, sometimes face when we are treating the patients with these molecules. The other important part is uh, hypotension. So as I mentioned, this is, these are the molecules which have a significantly potent combination of two separate pathways which are going to cause vasodilatation and therefore the BP has tendency to go down. So uh, especially in elderly population, once the patient is in the clinic, we should check the blood pressure in supine position and in standing position to make sure that there is no significant postural drop in blood pressure. So if the patient has symptoms of giddiness, especially when they stand up or they start walking, this is one thing we need to check. So if the patient does have hypotension and you want to still treat them with these molecules, why? Because it has a significant prognostic benefit. So what we need to do? Make sure that there are unnecessary, unnecessary medications which are sometimes on board. You know, many times heart failure starts with uh, treatment with diuretics and those diuretics are inadvertently continued which cause hypovolume reduction in the circulating volume. So that is not necessary. So diuretics will be necessary as long as there is significant fluid overload and patient has symptoms of edema or Krebs uh, uh, pertaining to these. So if these are not there, we should try and reduce the dose of diuretics as much as possible and see if you can go off diuretics. So once you take care of that, you improve the patient's volume status. Many times the BP stabilizes and the patient does benefit. Uh, many times you start these molecules with the BP of say 100, 110 and blood pressure drops to 90. So these molecules have been found to be safe even at the level of blood pressure of 90 systolic. As long as patient is having good maintenance and good urine output, we would continue these patients to be treated with these molecules even if the blood pressure continues to be 90 as long as there is no postural drop and no postural symptoms or worsening of renal function. What happens is many times because the heart is offloaded, the heart pumping or ejection fraction improves. So even if there is initial deterioration in the renal function, once the cardiac output has increased or improved, the renal perfusion also improves and the renal parameters also improve. So these are the three important problems which we commonly face if we are treating uh, patients with these molecules and these are the simple remedies what we can use. Many of these heart failure patients will also be on uh, uh, what is called as mineral cortical receptor blockers or aldosterone uh, antagonists. So, so these are the molecules which, will, which may need to be modified if the potassium keeps going up. But first target is of course uh, reduce the uh, potassium containing foods and then allow these patients to be treated with these molecules. So uh, we are treating the patients with uh, angiotensin receptor blocker and angiotensin inhibitor. It has excellent results. Patients in symptomatically much better. And we do his echocardiography and ejection fraction has improved significantly and almost becomes normal. Now what do we do? Should we stop these molecules? Definitely not. If the patient has improved and ejection fraction has become normal, these are the patients, if we make the mistake of stopping these molecules or reducing the doses, especially since the patient keeps complaining about the cost, what happens is that over a period of time, again the HP function will deteriorate and they will land up with the similar situations again and then we will not be able to bring that ejection fraction back to normal even if we restart all the molecules again. So uh, it is not recommended to reduce the doses or stop the medications even if the patient's condition or the ejection fraction improves. 
unless there is a significant hyperkalemia, significant renal worsening, only these are the situations or there is uh, allergic reaction uh, to the molecules, only then these are the molecules which should not be used. Otherwise, if the patient has improved, it's better to continue with this particular molecules.